Today I have a video for you inspired by a Tumblr post I saw. I just kind of stumbled upon this post and thought that what this person had to say was very interesting and worth talking about. I'm not very good at reading out loud. <laughs> I'm gonna try my best. Okay, ahem. I think it is very depressing that like every aesthetic people try to emulate are of people doing things but they themselves are incapable of being somebody that does things. The mall goth 2005 aesthetic revived in 2022 but nobody goes to the mall to be annoying and weird and nobody lets themselves be cringe. The cottagecore aesthetic but nobody knows how to raise gardens or live self-sufficiently. The dark academia aesthetic but nobody actually reads books. The obsession of looking like you are a type of person who does something without actually doing anything. The Instagram effect. We need to bring back the word poser. This isn't about hipsters and mainstream culture. This is about how we're living in an age that is so dependent on social media identity that it's more important to curate yourself as someone who appears as though they are competent and substantial through their appearance rather than their actions. That's the post. This kind of immediately sparked my interest and I started scrolling through the replies. Well, the replies were turned off actually, but you can see like uh, what people added when they reblogged it and like what they tagged and stuff. So I was scrolling through those and I feel like I found really interesting points both for and against this argument. So this person says, I get the criticism, but this is kind of boring. Maybe a mall goth is stuck at home. Maybe the cottage core person is a very tired teenager living in the city, stuck with a job that makes them very depressed. Maybe these people are just dreaming about being something becoming their ideal selves online and nowhere else. Just let people enjoy things and dress up. If you personally don't want to associate with those people, that's your prerogative, but assigning a morality and a stigma to it is weird. My instinct and the type of person I am just says, yeah, like, just let people live, you know? Let people dress up as whatever style they like and they want, and maybe don't gatekeep aesthetics, but, um... Some of the people who agree with the original posts are saying things like this. This is why conforming to an aesthetic based on things that people spend so much time invested in can be so incredibly damaging. It takes away from the intensity of academics and farm work and messy existence and glosses it all over with clothes and playlists. There's nothing wrong with a callback vibe, but if you're making your brand out of something you don't actually associate with, all you're doing is pretending. I think there are definitely points to be made here. I feel like you can't really go on the internet these days without hearing the word aesthetic. Modern fashion trends kind of try to embody a specific aesthetic without necessarily paying mind to whether or whether or not someone is like part of the culture behind that aesthetic. I think Instagram is kind of to blame for this whole thing. I think the person mentioned Instagram in the original post. It's so true because the way that you can boil down your entire existence into just pictures, like, yeah, you can add captions, yeah, you can put videos on there too now with reels and stuff like that, but, but you go there and you kind of expect to see pictures. And I think shoving your entire identity into a, a little page of a bunch of little pictures, it's really easy to um, fall into like, trying to emulate a certain aesthetic rather than like actually living that way or actually learning about culture because no one's gonna see you you know practicing the culture on a photo app they're gonna see your outfits your hairstyle you know how you look your appearance most subcultures used to have a lot more going on for them than just the aesthetic like with the rise of the internet and social media that has really changed things and the rise of fast fashion and online shopping. Any aesthetic you can think of, you can probably go to Amazon, type in cottagecore or goth or whatever, see a bunch of items in that aesthetic ready for you. You can just click add to cart, add to cart, add to cart, buy, and suddenly this whole new aesthetic wardrobe is shipped to your door and you did pretty much nothing. The original post brings up mall goth, cottagecore and dark academia. I feel like mall goth is different from these other two and I'll tell you why. Mall goth is a culture that is dead and it's not coming back. Malls aren't the same as they used to be. Um, with the rise of online shopping, 
A lot of people aren't going to malls anymore, especially with the pandemic too, but just in general, I feel like it's less of a thing to hang out at the mall. I'm not a teenager, so I don't know. I don't really know what teenagers are up to these days, but I feel like loitering at the mall is less of a activity, less of a activity the way it really used to be. If people want to emulate that aesthetic for a bit of a throwback, I don't really see anything wrong with that. And this is very interesting. If you look at the definition of mall goth, this is straight from Wikipedia. Mall goths are a subculture that began in the late 90s in the United States originating as a pejorative to describe people who dressed goth for the fashion rather than culture, it eventually developed its own culture based around new metal, industrial metal, emo, and hot topic. Um, I would call that very interesting. <laughs> the very aesthetic that they're using as an example originated as being accused of doing things for the aesthetic. <laughs> and not for the culture. Hmm. Also, I love that they were also called spooky kids. I was not aware of that. I was a little bit too young in the late 90s to be part of any of this, but I do remember people hanging out at the mall in like the late 2000s, um, being emo at the mall and stuff like that. I would love for that culture to come back, um, but I feel like it's just not going to, you know what I mean? Interesting that over time things become cool again. Do you think in 20 years people will try to emulate the e-girl aesthetic and get called posers? Honestly, maybe. It seems like everything kind of loses its cringe value over time for some reason, but with stuff like cottagecore and dark academia, I mean the thing is like not everyone has access to the lifestyle they want. As one of these replies said, someone could be stuck living in the city, hating their life, and wishing they could move to the countryside in a cottage, but they don't have the financial means to do to do that, and they're just kind of obsessed with the aesthetic. They're just wanting to like express their hopes and dreams and personal interests and style. My instincts want to say, life is short, we're only here for so long, let people live let people dress however they want, if it makes them happy and it's hurting nobody, nothing really matters in the end. But I don't know, maybe some things are worth talking about and analyzing. This person says, it used to be that most aesthetics were a byproduct of, of functionality. You dressed a certain way because you needed to live a certain lifestyle, but now it's the other way around. Appropriation of aesthetics has become a kind of lifestyle in itself, and aesthetics have been stripped and isolated from the skills and functions that they originated from. I definitely don't think that's incorrect. I mean, we see it all over the internet. People claiming to be punk, but they buy their clothes on Shein. Yikes. I absolutely agree with this, and I feel like this concept could be its own entire video because buying fast fashion directly contradicts the ideals that are so deeply rooted in punk culture and it's kind of ironic to even have the option to buy punk clothing on a place like Shein. Um, I don't know if there are people out there who are really making an aesthetic their entire brand on social media with absolutely zero interest in the culture. Um, I guess that's possible, especially with how trendy things like cottagecore have become. I, f I hear that word everywhere, like seriously, when it feels like it should be a more niche interest. So it's definitely possible, but I also feel like becoming interested in an aesthetic first and then getting into the culture is definitely something that happens and definitely something that's fine. You can be attracted to the aesthetic first. If you're interested enough in an aesthetic, the culture will kind of be all around you and it's hard not to get into it. But on the other hand, with these trends being everywhere, anyone can just buy a flowy dress and a corset or whatever cottage core people wear, I don't really know actually, and not really think about it further than that. But I absolutely don't think we should bring back the word poser, like the original post says, because random person who jumps on a trend and buys a couple pieces from Amazon gets lumped in with girl who is stuck in the city wishing she could move to the countryside. Then that person gets bullied for having interests outside of their lifestyle, which I don't think that's right. 
because not everyone can just pack up and have the lifestyle that they want. Even though I'm kind of more on the side of just let people wear whatever they want, I think this is a very important thing to keep in the back of our minds. This whole idea of social media identity and how that's separate from our real lives and how it's so easy to project something that you're not, how easy it is to be inauthentic on social media. And it's not like people are necessarily being intentionally fake. Maybe some people are, but maybe we all need to be more aware of what we're posting and why we're posting it. Are we trying to fit a certain aesthetic? Do we need to like kind of package up ourselves and brand ourselves as something to, to be ready for social media? I think that's worth thinking about. I think that teenagers are very drawn to aesthetics because with all these like popular aesthetic groups, it can give a place to belong and also a sense of identity when identity feels very important around that age. And honestly, I feel very lucky that I didn't really grow up in this age of social media. When I was in high school, Instagram was just becoming a thing and it was nothing close to what it is now. You wouldn't go on there and see a bunch of picture-perfect aesthetics and and overly photoshopped faces and stuff like that. You would go on your feed and you would see people's Starbucks drinks and pictures of their plates of food. We all kind of looked like regular, normal people. Um, I feel like there's more of a pressure now to be more put together and have almost a brand. It really hurts my heart imagining a teenager feeling like they have to stick to their brand or like stick to their aesthetic. That shouldn't even be a thing at that age unless you're like a huge influencer at that age already, which I know that does happen, but if you're just a normal person, wear what you want, live your life. I can't imagine what it's like. Um, if anyone has experience with that, definitely let me know down below. I think I've said about enough. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think. Do you think abolish all aesthetics or do you think let people wear whatever they want and do whatever they please? Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.